The madness is over for UK. Kentucky's appearance in the NCAA tournament was short lived. Indiana knocked off the Cats in the second round. Coach Gallon and his players talk about exiting the tournament sooner than they had hoped. We talked to the team. Well, I'm texting back with one of my best friends. She's keeping me up to date. There was a lot of basketball happening at the same time tonight. How fans kept up with it all. This is WKYT News. Another basketball season in the books. You're watching WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Kentucky and Indiana renewed their storied rivalry in the NCAA tournament today. This time, the Hoosiers ended the Cats season. Kentucky goes down in Des Moines. Second round, NCAA lost to IU. Lee K. Howard was in the locker room, and it's tough. It was tough. Clearly, a lot of emotion on the players' faces. Alex Poythers, Jamal Murray, Tyler Eulis likely finished at Kentucky. But everybody knows their season is finished much earlier than they expected. Well, it was bitter, and the Cats couldn't make shots. Indiana struck inside, coming from behind to take the lead with about eight minutes to go. Go. And then back to back three pointers, Kentucky down 10. It was too much to overcome. Um, there's two things that happened. We had six offensive fouls. I don't know if in my career I've had a team have six offensive fouls. Then we couldn't make open shots, so we have eight assists. Like all these open shots we missed, we missed a ton of really good shots. We didn't have shots. You know, I missed shots that I, I normally make again. You know. Um, you know, three offensive fouls. You know, just didn't go our way. And our guys did a great job in a short period of time of getting ready for what we knew would be a, a tremendous physical and mental battle, and, and, and they really stayed locked into the concentration. I think the fact that we rebounded so well and kept them from getting second chance points. 73 67, Indiana wins it. The Hoosiers on to Philadelphia. And for Kentucky and Kentucky fans, they go home. They go home. They made the trip to Des Moines thinking that they'd be going to Philadelphia next week. And we caught up with some of those fans after the game. And certainly the Big Blue Nation thought this team was going to go much further. They played hard. Unfortunately, they got beat. Indiana hit the shots when it mattered. So that's how it is. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Well, it's disappointing. You know, we were flat footed. Uh, IU played really good defense. We couldn't, we were rushing our shots a little bit. And I hate to say it, but they just out hustled us. Not happy right, right now, but we are UK. I'm proud of our team. And we make Indiana relevant again. Kentucky played one of our worst games of the year. I mean, it, but Indiana played good defense. Uh, they deserved to win. It was a very, very good game. Was, I'm disappointed that we didn't finish out like we were expected to. I expected to go further. Some days you show up, and some days you don't. We didn't show up today. I mean, I think they tried their hardest. It's definitely an off year. It's definitely an off year for the Wildcats. So I mean. It's just, it happens. It's, it's a pretty good year for an off year, in my opinion. Rob, you can see that this fan base clearly cares, and the Wildcats, the team, they care a whole lot as well. It was a fun team to follow. It really was. But it ends here in Des Moines, Kentucky finishing up 27-9. and That's it from here at Wells Fargo Arena. Back to you. Thank you very much, Rob. It's John Calipari's earliest exit in the NCAA while at Kentucky. We'll have much more coming up in game time. Back here in Lexington, fans had more than their fair share of games to watch. Many were splitting their time between the Kentucky game in Iowa, the UK Hoops game at Memorial Coliseum, and Dunbar's run in the Sweet 16 at Rupp. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner talked with fans trying to take in all the action. UK Hoops with a huge win over UNC Asheville Saturday left fans at the women's game ready to watch the men take on IU. Well, this is going to be a hard game to win. The Lady Cats, along with hundreds of fans, tuned in to the men on the big screen at Memorial Coliseum. It definitely uh, helps us build um, camaraderie all around the whole team, um, both the men's and the women's. I have game day on my phone, so I was uh, getting the updates once the men started. And uh, then somebody in front of us was keeping up with uh, telling us they were going to the state tournament. So that's uh, in town tonight, too. While Kentucky was out on the road looking for number nine, high school boys took over the road. Up arena floor and fans had to figure out how to keep up with it all. My daughter goes to Dunbar, so we were not going to miss this. I am a huge fan, and uh, I went to the SEC tournament, and I just wish I could be out there with them. 
All the basketball at one time had fans relying on their technology. I had it live for a little bit, but of course in here you can't, you just can't hang on to it. So I'm texting back one of my best friends. She's keeping me up to date. Dunbar held the lead against Newport Central Catholic. But getting text updates on the Cats was a nail-biting experience. I think we'll get to the final four and maybe go to the championship. If Duke can do it, Kentucky can do it. After a good run, UK fell to IU. Fans say this loss will take some time to get over, but they'll never stop saying. <laughs> In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Dunbar will play DOS tomorrow in the championship game at 2 o'clock. Spring begins this weekend, but it sure doesn't feel like it. We are tracking the chance for some flakes in the forecast. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell has an early look at some chilly mornings. Yeah, that's right. And tonight, even right now, is part of that. And with the moisture we have trying to work into the area, a flake or two is certainly a possibility across parts of Kentucky. It's going to be more about the cold, but you have to keep in mind that we could be dealing with uh, some flakes thrown in with that cold. 39 right now in Lexington with 37, Danville, Richmond, Mount Sterling, Moorhead, Somerset, all at 37 degrees uh, here tonight. We look at a picture with the uh, Defender Radar Network and the satellite thrown into the mix, and you can see moisture really showing up more so along Interstate 65. What some of this might do is take a little bit of a dip and cruise across southern Kentucky, and there might be just enough moisture left over the mountains that we try to get maybe a flake or two going for you all as those temperatures drop during the overnight hours tonight. But the true focus of the forecast, since here in about an hour, we're going to be in spring. We're trying to find it, though. And it will show up, and I'll show you exactly where it is coming up around 1134. The Fayette County Coroner has identified the woman who died today after a fall at Raven Run Nature Sanctuary. The coroner says 22 year old Mary Catherine Stewart from Kenton County fell off an overlook near the Kentucky River while hiking one of the trails. Crews believe she fell somewhere between 35 and 50 feet. Because of her location, it took crews about 30 minutes to get to her. She died before they could reach her. Well, as you know, the, the park is a, is a nature preserve. It's a very rugged area. Uh, we had both a, a repel team to rip, rip, rip. We had a repel team to go down the cliff to reach, to reach her. Uh, we also sent fire department rescue boats up the river to her location. The fire department's boat crews had trouble recovering the body. They got it on a boat, but say the boat capsized. Firefighters swam safely to shore. A dive team had to pull the woman's body out of the water. The city says Raven Run Park is closed until further notice. A woman in Wolf County is recovering tonight after a fall at a roadside climbing area. Crews rescued her around 12:30 this afternoon. The Wolf County Search and Rescue team says the woman was in between her first and second bolts of climbing and she fell about 15 feet. They flew her to UK Hospital. A grand jury has indicted a Laurel County constable for a deadly shooting. 37 year old Bobby Joe Smith was indicted on a second degree manslaughter charge Friday. The sheriff's office says Smith was trying to serve a warrant on 30 year old Brandon Stanley at a gas station when the shooting happened earlier this month. Hundreds of people raced this morning to remember a fallen Richmond police officer. Officer Daniel Ellis died in the line of duty back in November. This morning, the community helped put together a 5K to raise money for a memorial foundation his wife created. She helped organize today's event at the Richmond Center. Their son Luke wore bib number 457 in honor of his father's badge. Katie Ellis went with number 422. We both have the birthday, April 22nd. When we first met, I didn't believe him that we had the same birthday. I made him get his driver's license out and tell me about it. Organizers estimated the race raised $75,000 for the Officer Ellis Memorial Foundation. They plan on holding the event at the same place and same time next year.